Hello, and welcome to Cryptid Spotlight, Kushtaka. Today we are returning to one of my more popular series, and its topic was suggested to me by James Kususnik. So a huge thank you goes out to you, as I had never heard of this cryptid before. When many people hear about the cryptid that is hairy and walks bipedally, most automatically think of either Sasquatch, or maybe a Dogman. However, today we find a creature that has both of these characteristics, but isn't even close to what many people think of. I will be doing this video a little bit different, since normally when I do a cryptid spotlight it is focusing on only one subject. However, when it comes to the Kushtaka, there are two other creatures who are equally linked to it from other cultures. I will be mentioning them here as well, but due to the lack of their information, it mainly will be in passing. So, my cryptid family, get bundled up since our adventure into this topic is finding us in Alaska. The Kushtaka, also known simply as the Water Devil or also the Otter Man, yes, as in the adorable creature that fill many social media pages, is said to roam the forests and waters of Kanik, Alaska. This legend and dare I say sightings come from the Tlingit and Shimshin people, although similar ones are described by other people which I'll get to shortly. Descriptions of this being are a little hard to come by, and this is even compounded when figuring it has multiple forms. For this moment, I will talk about its most famous form. Most describe it as having medium to long length brown or tan fur covering its entire body. It has immensely sharp claws on both its hands and feet, and it is said to have the face of an otter. Due to it living in both water and forests, it is said to produce quite a strong stench. While no size is mentioned, I can only go by a handful of encounters, and I would assume it stands anywhere from 6 to 7 feet tall. But with this, it is incredibly powerful. Within the lore, these beings again tread in an area that we have been seeing lately of other cryptids, where some appear to be motivated to help people, while others wish to cause people harm. Some have claimed that these beings will help a lost traveler find its way home, or by giving them warmth while trying to survive in the cold. Yet, in other stories, these creatures will lure as unaware victims deep into the forest with the sounds of a baby crying or a woman in distress. Once successful, they will do one of two things. Either tear the person to shreds, or in a very familiar scenario, change the person into a kushtaka. While looking into information about this subject, I saw a somewhat popular YouTuber make strong references to this creature as simply being a Sasquatch, and that it was described as an otter due to characteristics associated with animals that the native people were familiar with. While this is an interesting theory, and I mean no disrespect to that person, who I will leave unnamed, the two beings couldn't be farther apart in a few of their behaviors. Here is where I get to the part I have been trying to dance around previously. The Kushtaka are not a normal being, since they have the ability to change forms at will. From all accounts, they can appear as a normal otter, as the creature I have been describing previously, and they can take the form of a human being. Many assume that this creature can actually shapeshift into anything it wishes to be, but only the three mentioned have ever been seen. Frequently stories emerge of hunters who are out in the forest are suddenly approached by a group of mysterious men who ask for their help. Only for these strangers to revert back to the Otter Man form once successful with their plot of luring their victims deep into the forest to make a meal of them or to turn them into one of their own. Similarly, the activity of changing a human into a Kushtaka can be utilized in a helpful manner. A bit ago I mentioned these beings help lost travelers in keeping warm. Well, in order to do this, they change them into an Otter Man. It does help the travelers, but now they are stuck as being a Kushtaka, only able to revert back to human form if a shaman is willing and capable of helping. Frequently within these stories, the Otter Man lures sailors to their death, but it seems they have a penchant for abducting village children. This is done in a multitude of ways, such as the previously described shapeshifting, or they can simply raid a village. One other feature that is utilized is that these creatures are said to emit a high-pitched three-part whistle starting low, then high, and back low. It is assumed that this behavior is used to draw the more curious members of the village toward the sound. While these all seem bleak to anyone planning on their next adventure in Alaska, there are a few ways to deter the beast. 
According to the legends, the Otter Man is averse to copper and the smell of urine. <laughs> None of these stories describe whose urine should be used or how copper should be displayed, so keep that in mind if you plan on hunting the Kushtaka. It also should be mentioned that this creature is said to be afraid of fire as well. Sometimes. Again, that isn't helpful, but hopefully if anyone sees one, they find the Otter Man that is afraid of fire. Just as a hypothesis, I wonder if the ones who aren't affected by fire are the ones who spend more time in human form and are used to seeing it. Maybe the wilder ones of the group who spend most of their days in the water or deep forests aren't familiar with the sight of fire. The final thing that one may consider bringing in order to have some form of protection is a dog. It appears that all otter men, and I assume otter women, fear the sight of a dog. As an otter off branch, I mentioned otter men and otter women, and it got me thinking. In all of the descriptions of sightings, it was clearly stated that no signs of genitalia were present, so it makes me curious. If the only way for these beings to reproduce is by literally making humans into them. I guess until the strange category of romance novels about Bigfoot branches off into the Kushtaka realm, we may never know. While many legends have a tradition of being just spread from person to person, this one is quite different, as there is a famous story about the Otter Man. This story is found in a book called The Strangest Story Ever Told by Harry D. Culp. In fact, the book comes from the handwritten manuscript from Harry, and it was later found by his daughter and it is currently stored at the Alaska State Library. In this story, Harry was visiting the area known as Thomas Bay in June of 1909. During this trip, Harry met a prospector by the name of Charlie, who told him about finding an area with gold-filled quartz, but he had no plans of ever mining it. When pressed as to why, he told Harry that after finding the quartz, he climbed up a ridge to get a sense of location for a return trip. While there, he looked down towards the valley and saw he was near an area the locals had warned him about as being haunted, called the Half Moon Lake. Many people say it is actually called Crescent Moon Lake. Then shockingly, he stated, and I quote, Swarming up the ridge toward me from the lake were the most hideous creatures. I couldn't call them anything but devils, as they were neither men nor monkeys, yet looked like both. They were entirely sexless, their bodies covered with long, coarse hair, except where the scabs and running sores had replaced it. Each one seemed to be reaching out for me, and striving to be the first to get me. The air was full of their cries, and the stench from their sores and bodies made me faint. Charlie then further mentioned that these creatures chased him up the hill while clawing at his back and screaming until he managed to get to his canoe and paddle to safety. This story is frequently represented as an actual encounter with the Kushtaka. However, even though I presented it here in a similar fashion, I can't help but wonder if what this story references is in fact a Bigfoot colony, due to their description and the fact that getting to the water saved him, which the Otter Man is known to be fine in the water. Moving on, I did want to mention a few other creatures that roam the same area and could be linked to the Otter Man. I say briefly, since there is very little information about them, but I feel this presentation would be incomplete if I didn't at least mention them. The first is called the Urauli, or Hairy Man, from the Yupik people from western and southwestern Alaska. This creature is said to stand near 10 feet tall, be covered from head to toe in brown fur, has glowing, luminescent eyes, and its arms reach down to its ankles. They are said to make a whistling sound, but also emit a sound that is reminiscent to a loon. These creatures are said to be peaceful, unlike some Kushtaka, but they are created from the souls of children who had gotten lost in the forest. However, with all that said, a similar looking creature was sighted in Valdez, Alaska, who was extremely violent towards people. The Denina people from South Central Alaska also have a creature who is described as looking as the Kushtaka, but it is called the Natina. I could find very little information about this being other than it utilizing the behavior of stealing children away, so if any of my viewers could help out here, I would greatly appreciate it. One last thing I would like to bring to the table is that stories of this being really seemed very familiar to me, and I couldn't shake the similarities it had to the Wendigo. While the Wendigo is very different in description, I have to note that it tends to stay in colder climates, it will lure people into its traps, and it will either eat its victims 
or transform them into another Wendigo. Granted, the process is done differently, but I felt the need to mention the similarities. So as I end this, I feel the need to note that while many people frequently link this creature to Bigfoot, I think the differences are enough to separate them. All descriptions state it looks like a mix between an otter and a man. It will inhabit watery areas and it has the ability to shapeshift, not to mention using that ability to change other people's appearances. While some Sasquatch have been sighted in or near water, none that I am aware of can make their home there. This behavior is reinforced with them being known to lure sailors to their death. As for the shapeshifting and changing other people into their kind, that is a huge step away from the records on Sasquatch behavior. Granted, being one hasn't been captured, no one knows what abilities a Sasquatch has, but to date, shapeshifting hasn't been tied to them. Again, that I am aware of. So at this point, I extend a huge thank you to James Kasusnik for suggesting this topic. Also, I would love to hear what you think about this cryptid. Is it simply a legend, a cautionary tale, or a misidentified Sasquatch? Here we are three weeks in a row, and I haven't messed up my schedule, and I remember to include, here are a few of my comments from last week that I enjoyed. Just Purple Gaming says, Love the content, always great to see a new video or even when you keep us updated. How about a video on animal spirits? Don't remember if you have one or not, but keep up the good work. Thank you for that, Just Purple Gaming, and also for the suggestion. Sadly, this year I've been having to post a lot of update videos, but I'm happy you enjoy them as well. As for spirit animals, I haven't made a video about that topic specifically, but I have mentioned it briefly in other videos. I am assuming you're referring to ghost animals and not the spirit animal like what people sometimes claim best represents their personality. I will certainly be looking into that topic for a future video. The ghosts, not the personality traits. Rough Collie says, Great video. You have a nice voice. Do a video on alien encounters in Brazil. Thank you, Rough Collies. I appreciate the comment about my voice. It certainly seems to be something that either people love or hate. In the past, I had more bad comments about that, but over the years, I've grown more comfortable with the whole YouTube narration thing, and I think that helped out a lot. As for the Aliens in Brazil video, I will certainly be looking into it, and I've been really wanting to make an alien video again. Marla Mitchell says, Love this. That Phantom Ghost train reminds me of something out of the Twilight Zone. Can you imagine boarding it? Thank you, Marla Mitchell. I am happy you enjoyed the video. It was quite a spooky clip for sure. I did read reports of people seeing ghost trains that stop only every so often, and a few unfortunate souls accidentally took a ride on it. They described all the passengers looking like the spirits of people with sunken eyes and in various forms of decomposition. The story sort of reminded me of the taxi driver in the original Ghostbuster movie. Now that is a train I wouldn't want aboard. If you haven't yet done so, do please consider subscribing to my channel for more content like this, and also, could you share my videos with someone you know who may be interested in this type of genre. With that, be safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Later!